Good morning, God's beloved. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. The sun is shining. You know, we, we had some rain last week, and I know there's, there's more coming. I was just talking to Marilyn, who said she stopped doing her rain dance. We're good. We're covered now. Um, so thank you. Uh, and, and I was saying, my mom called yesterday, and she said, are you all flooded out? Yeah, and, and I said, no, we're, we're fine. It's beautiful. There's a double rainbow. It's like it's a beautiful day. Uh, so I was, though, at the, at the Planet Hollywood the other night. And, uh, of course, maybe you saw on the news, they had rain falling in the casino, so I didn't know what I would find, but they've all dried up now and uh, are, are doing just fine. So I know there's more rain coming, and we certainly do need it, and, uh, of course, praying for all those uh, who do not have adequate shelter and need to get in out of the rain, so definitely keep them in your prayers, and, uh, and for those driving on the streets, too, that's, that's scary stuff, as always, but... It is a beautiful day to be together as church, to be here in worship. Say hello to somebody. If you're online, share this video. Welcome them to worship with us. Uh, we're glad Pastor Matt is back from our churchwide assembly in hello, Columbus. And, good morning. and we're glad uh, to hear an update from all the uh, church business that went on there. And uh, excited to be here with you today. So we prepare our hearts and minds for worship now. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let's sing our opening hymn, Blessed Are They.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life. Save us from ourselves and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. Let us pray. God, our refuge, in good times and when our lives are difficult, your steadfast love never fails. In Christ, you have redeemed and welcomed us. Open our eyes and our hearts to opportunities to share your blessings with our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. And at this time, we invite the children to come forward for the children's message. We're glad you're here. All right. We've got some superstars right here. Wow. Did you all have a great first week of school? Yeah. Yeah? JP said, yeah. I love that. You know, Did I have a great first week of going to Columbia? Columbus, yeah. We're going to talk about that later, yeah. You know, when, when you guys go to school, do they let you just wander around all by yourself? Yeah. Yeah, you just, you just go wherever you want, you do whatever you want? I don't think so. Will you, will you take one of these for me, Noah? Take one of those. Can you take one of those, Jada? JP, check this out. This is cool. Come here. Come here. Let me show you. Well, you know, this is called, what's this called? Do you know? Band-Aid. Band-Aid. Good idea. It's not a Band-Aid, but it's, what is it? A sticky. It goes like this. It's a sticky finger. It makes a sound like that. Do you hear that? It's called Velcro, right? And it's, yeah, it's a sticky thing, right? Yeah. And it's kind of fun, right? You want to do it? It looks like a Band-Aid, but it's not a Band-Aid. Yeah, go ahead. You try. Can you pull it? Here, you pull this side. Pull that one. I'm asking Santa ah. for a Lego Here you go. Stick it together. I'm asking Santa for a Lego Sonic. That's a good idea. We're going to put that on the list, okay? We'll make sure he gets that list, okay? With Velcro, it's sticky, right? It sticks together. So just like when you're at school and you have to go somewhere, your teachers or somebody sticks with you. Yeah, or maybe you go to the grocery store with mom or grandma or, or somebody. You go to the store with dad. You go run off and do your own thing. Maybe at the library, right? Yeah, yeah. But you go with mama, right? You got to stay together. We got to be together to be. Why do we do that? Why do we have to stay together, Noah? Uh, Okay. But they didn't have money. Okay, that's, that's a good answer, too. But, you know, I, we, it's safe to be together, isn't it? We want to stay together so we can be yeah, safe. I like to go to five places that my mom won't and dad won't. Or you get to run free. Yeah, we want to run around and be free sometimes. My dad, my, my, my mom and dad said I can do whatever I want. Okay, well, well, we'll have that class later. Yeah. But you know what? We're going to hear a story today. Hold, give, me a, give me a second. No, all right. Let me, let me say something, then I'll let you say something. Ready? When, we, um, when, when God is with us, we know we can be safe. God sticks to us like Velcro. Let's show me, Jada. Stick it together. Stick it together real tight, and it sticks good, doesn't it? That's how God sticks to us. So no matter where we go, everywhere we go, God is sticking with us, keeping us safe giving us what we need. And we're going to hear a story about that from the Bible today. 
in the book of Ruth. Can you guys say book of Ruth? Yeah. We're going to hear that. Oh, we got some more friends. They're going to come with us. No, they're coming up here. Come on. Come on, Jojo. Yeah, have a seat for us. Come on. Let's stick together like Velcro. Come on. Yeah, we're glad you're here, Jojo. Welcome to church. Oh, he wanted to greet. He's a greeter, so he saw people coming in. He wanted to greet them. So he's got a ball. He's having fun. Everywhere we go where we're having fun, when we're at school, when we're at home, when we're at the library, the grocery store, God is sticking with us too. Yeah. And God sticks with us everywhere we go. You all hear that? You're never alone. Yeah, it's, it's not always safe to be alone. Sometimes we want to be alone and we want to be free, but, but sometimes we've got to be careful, right? Will you pray with me? All right, ready? You repeat after me. God, stick with us. Just like Velcro. Keep us safe. And give us all that we need. Amen. Amen. And we're going to hear about that today in the book of Ruth, all right? We're so glad you all came to church. Let me get a sticker for you. You ready for stickers? And then you can go greet everybody, okay, Noah? I love those new shoes. Are those new shoes? Are you sure? Look what you got. What is it? What is it? A star. That's right. Jada, that's right. And you can, you can hold on to that Velcro and you, you can make it stick, okay? Awesome. I got a keyboard. I love that. You're going to play music for us. Good to see you, Jojo. Welcome to church.
Good morning. Good morning. Our reading this morning comes to us from the book of Ruth, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judea went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the names of his two sons were Malan and Chilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judea, in Judah, I'm sorry. Then they went to the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moab wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there about 10 years, both Malan and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons and her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal, deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi <clears throat> said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters. Go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you, because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God shall be my God. Where you die, I will die. There I will be buried. May the Lord do thus and so for me, <clears throat> to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they came to Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the woman said, is this Naomi? She said to them, call me no longer Naomi, call me Mara, for the Lord, for the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has dealt harshly with me and the Almighty has brought calamity upon me? Naomi returned together with Ruth the Moabite, her daughter-in-law who came back with her from the country of Moab. They came to Bethlehem at the beginning of the barley harvest. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading for the gospel. A 
Halle, 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 Luhuya. Halle, 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 Luhuya. Halle, 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 Luhuya. Halle, Luhuya. Halle. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 5. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Thank you, Helen, for reading for us. We got that whole first chapter of Ruth today. And guess what? Next week we can have the second. So read along with us. I, you, can, you can read the whole book of Ruth in one sitting easily. It's a great story to share and to listen to. And so we're glad to be spending a few weeks in there uh, before we finish up the summer months. Grace and peace to you from our creator and our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you know that uh, I consider Bob Marley one of the greatest songwriters and performers of the last century. Uh, don't at me, it's just true. Uh, his songs, which are so often centered in love and unity, joy and peace, are filled with lyrics that come from scripture, especially the Hebrew Bible and the Psalms and the book of Revelation too. They seem to like that one a lot. We even hosted an evening of worship here a few years back, all with the music of Bob Marley and the Wailers. That was fun, maybe we'll do that again sometime. So many of his songs lifted up those who knew the struggle for equality, for freedom, liberation, and his popularity continues more than 40 years after his death. So I was reading the book of Ruth this week and I was thinking about all these themes and I couldn't help but think of songs and lyrics that proclaim God's promises amidst loss, deliverance, hunger, abundance, loyalty, and love. And one that I thought of is called, uh, it's called them belly full, but we hungry. Another one that popped into my head, could you be loved? That's a good one. You're singing it now, right? If you know it, you're singing it in your head. Another was good times, bad times. Oh, sorry. That's a Led Zeppelin. But, um, <laughs> but that's a great one too. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. But over the next few weeks, we're going to get into these recurring themes that we hear throughout the book of Ruth. And of course, there's lots of songs written specifically about Ruth. And uh, one that's, that's fairly new, I think, by Lauren Daigle is called Loyal. And she's going to be here in town in September. So if you get a chance, go see her at Resorts World. Uh, great song. Um, it just songs that, you know, everywhere you go. Wait, that's Full House theme. That's all. I don't get this mixed up. Um, but that this theme of being together is it's in the book, and it's, it's in so many different works of art. But these artists, they stick in our minds because they have something to say that resonates with our own life experiences. Have you ever been hungry? Have you ever been affected by inequality? Have you seen politics divide and people suffer? I have. Their words and arrangements entice us to imagine a better world, to stir our creativity. Think of Handel's Messiah, of course. Or Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. Whatever your preference, music can change our mood and open our eyes to new ideas. Is there an artist or, or song that you put on when you just need to relax or recover after a busy day or keep you energized on a road trip? Queen songs, right, Roger? Yeah. Favorite? Yeah. Every time, yeah. Well, who's your favorite? Pink. Pink, of course. Yes, that's like the rallying cry. Raise your glass. Yeah. What else? Elvis. Yes, a great Vegas answer, of course, and, and a new movie. Pantera. Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll do a medal, medley later. No, we won't. What did you say, Stace? 
10th Avenue North, which is a great Christian band, and I, I love sharing the story. I, uh, when I was in a band in high school, we actually practiced uh, right off of 10th Avenue North, where that band was from. That's kind of funny. I love music. You know I do. But this book of Ruth, kind of, it stirs our creativity, and it's a story passed down through generations. It's done things like that for people of faith for thousands of years. Teaches us about God, opens our minds to see how the Lord works in human struggle and who God includes in the ongoing journey of freedom and peace and love. Like the music we love and the songs that continue to resonate in our lives and connect us to the world around us, this story of Ruth and Naomi can speak to each of us in so many different ways. And the story begins by introducing us to a dead man, Elimelech, who is from Bethlehem in Judah, but he's known here as an Ephrathite, Ephrathite, which is an older name for the city, actually. The native inhabitants of Bethlehem would have been Ephrathites. Yeah, maybe you've heard this part, that Bethlehem in Hebrew means house of, who knows? Bread, bread, there's bread there, yeah. And in Arabic, it's house of meat. So we got bread and meat, okay, we've we're, we're got a good table set. And Ephratha in Hebrew means fruitful. So we've got bread and meat and fruit. The table is set for a banquet, right? But we got a problem. In this story, there's not enough food. There's a famine in the land. And Elimelech and his family, wife Naomi and their two sons, they moved to Moab. And the people there in Moab, well, they were often known to be enemies of Israel. Though they were distant relations, they were kind of just a broken family relationship maybe, but Moab was a son of Lot. That's where that name comes from. So they were just on the other side of the Dead Sea, not far away where the shore was green and good for farming. So when the food became scarce, it sounded like a good place to go. But then this triple tragedy strikes for the family. Naomi's husband, Elimelech, and her, their two sons died. And Naomi is left without anyone who could provide a living for her and for her daughters-in-law. She must decide the next step. Should they stay or should they go? Clash. Classic song by The Clash, if you don't know. Where is home? They need to know, where am I going to go? Well, where is our home? I wonder about sometimes. You remember back in 2008, we saw the, the mortgage market collapse an economic downturn, affect tourism here in our city, and more. And Las Vegas was one of the most hard-hit cities uh, in the U.S. as home prices dropped 62% from 2006 to 2012. I remember, that was me, man. People were leaving town in record numbers. I went to seminary. The foreclosure rate peaked at 9.6% by 2010. So many here in our valley, already being from other places, chose to get up and go. But still, others have chosen to make their homes here, to stick it out, even in the hard times. And it's cool, it's just a cool thing to see how Vegas always rebounds when times get tough. But it's rare to meet the Vegas native, right? You, not so many people you meet are from here, born and raised. I know one who is. Um, that's right, my wife, yes. Um, yeah, I yeah, him too. Yeah. So home for many of us might be where we were born and raised, maybe where we've spent the most time, maybe where we've decided we want to live. But more than that, I think home is where you find the people you love and the ones with whom you will spend your life. They become our home. And we have a lot of choice in that matter, I think. We surround ourselves with the people we want to be with. But I wonder about the choices people make here sometimes when I talk to people, as I speak to the folks around us in need of help. And many of the guys here in the neighborhood are trying to get back on their feet, and I hear their stories. They want to get a bus ticket somewhere else, get out of here. Another may decide to buy an RV, or will get off the street after they do this or that. They have a plan. It's all going to work out. Others are just trying to get through to the next day. And there are injuries and the pain of just living on the street will wear you out and make 
just moving around difficult. Walking around all day has worn them out, right? They are harassed and beaten, sick and so often alone that they have nothing left but despair. And what can we offer but a little food, some help, clothing, a prayer? It's a constant reminder that our choices cannot save us. And we cannot always reason our way out of our circumstances. For Naomi and Ruth, going home was more about surviving. If they went back to Naomi's homeland, she might be able to rely on a family member to help them out, to take her in. And Ruth's, Ruth's home was Moab. To run home to her mother's house would have been the easiest, the safest decision, the wisest idea. But she chose to stay with Naomi, this one that she loved. She made Naomi her home, her mother-in-law, and says, uh, the, the scripture says she clung to her. She clung to her. Why? Was it out of commitment or duty or habit? We don't really know. Was there a reason? She'd rather not return to her family home in, in Moab? don't have an answer, but she demonstrates an uncommon, unexpected, maybe undeserved loyalty to Naomi and vows where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. And your people shall be my people and your God, my God. She tells Naomi, I'm staying no matter what happens. It's powerful. And we've been through so much already, she says to Naomi. We've been through so much. I'm going to decide to stay by your side for the next chapter and the one after that. And this is our life together now. Imagine this story being told thousands of years ago, passed down from generation to generation. It would have been funny. They would be laughing if it wasn't so terrifying. What would this woman's life be? Reliant on strangers who might abuse her or treat her as an unwelcome outsider? She'd have nothing, no one to protect her, no one to step in and help. She could have no realistic expectation of safety or care. So she puts herself at the mercy of the people in this new home and would accept this new reality even if it meant her death. Where's God in the story? But Naomi speaks of the Lord. We don't hear God as a, as a character in the story necessarily, but Naomi says, call me no longer Naomi. Call me Mara, bitter. For the Almighty has dealt bitterly with me. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi when the Lord has dealt harshly with me and the Almighty has brought calamity? On me. When bad things happen, we start to go, why are you doing this, God? Why would you treat me this way? Reminds us of Job, right? Crying out in lament to God, why have you dealt with us so harshly? What did we do to deserve this? Naomi says God has dealt harshly with her. Her life was fruitful, but now is bitter. Now she's home, but she's empty. And this story of love and loyalty and loss might seem dramatic, but it's a story that has been told and retold for so long because it resonates with our lives. We've been through stuff like that. When we've lost so much, how can we survive? We turn to scripture. We want to know, how do I avoid becoming Mara, becoming bitter? by the circumstances of our lives and the pain of the world. Maybe it's music that helps you out of those tough times. When we have suffered tragedy after tragedy and live in a constant state of grief, how can we know that like Bob sings, everything's gonna be all right? Well, I used to think if I could just make the right choices, I could avoid the perils of life try, don't we? We want to find the path of least resistance to get to the places we want to go, but then life happens. 
things happen beyond our control, like changing relationships, or we lose a job, or natural disasters occur. And the ground beneath our feet seems to shift and we have to go a different way. I was hearing stories this weekend about things going on in Haiti right now, still trying to recover from earthquake and, and gang violence and, and just being alienated by surrounding nations and, and the pain that's there. What do you do? Where do you turn? Sometimes it is us. Sometimes we make a choice that, that is not the best, but we hope it's all going to work out. We must entrust ourselves to another way and decide we'll, we'll accept the outcome until we have to choose again. If you've had the experience of losing a loved one or now find yourself in declining health or have suffered heartbreak, you can imagine a bit of what these women had to go through. Maybe you've been in that situation. You've had to do the best you could to rebuild, but something's just missing. There's a holy one who hears you. Maybe you've been angry at the universe. Maybe even angry at God for bringing calamity on you. And that's okay too. The one who makes a way can take it. You can come home. Home is that place where they can't kick you out, where they have to accept you and love you no matter what, where you belong. Ought to be. God is where your home is. God's the one who has given us everything in Jesus Christ, who died and is risen for us and for the whole world to bring us home again to be with us through every tragedy, to love us, to restore us, to make us fruitful again. Restore us to wholeness in him. The promise is still good, especially when you feel broken and beyond help, unsure, unable to go on. God is calling you home, clinging to us no matter what. So we might not hear God as an active character in the story, but as the one behind the scenes. And while Naomi hopes that the Lord would deal kindly with her and her daughters, she still feels that God has brought her back empty. And she's not sure where God is. We feel that too sometimes. And we wonder, what's next? What's going to be down the road for me? How can this nation put itself back together? How can we be fruitful again. Naomi's not sure what's going to happen for her, but she does the only thing she knows how to do and heads for home. And we end this first chapter on a positive note. It draws us in and keeps us here to listen for the rest of the story, to know there will be a time for redemption. It's now time for the harvest. Amen. Please stand. Let's sing our hymn of the day for all the faithful women.
Let us continue as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. Help us to be a home for all your people and renew our commitment to our siblings and faith around the globe. And bless the work of our ecumenical and interfaith partners, especially Nevadans for the common good. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain your creation. We pray for all places affected by natural disasters, especially those recovering from flooding in eastern Kentucky and those in the path of fires in California. Transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer your justice. Strengthen their resolve to defend those who are vulnerable and to stand publicly against all forms of oppression. We pray for all people affected by war and violence, especially in Ukraine, Haiti, Israel, and Palestine. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for people harmed by racist discrimination, ableist discrimination, and all people discriminated against based on their gender identity or sexual orientation. Rescue us from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings and work through us to bring equitable change. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community, celebrating with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep especially Donna, Stacy, Myra Haley, my mother Suzanne, Tony, Vinny, Han, Bruce, Joan, Linda, Sarah's nephew Logan, Maria, Stephen, Tammy's sister Terry, Allison and Quinn, Tony, Eldon, Ellen, Taylor, Kelly, Bob and Debbie, Peggy and Wendell, Pete. In our joy and in our tears, be near us, merciful God. Receive our prayer. Arise, O God, and protect our children. We pray for all teachers, administrators, bus drivers, school staff, and aides, that they would be able to teach and learn in safety this school year. Let them have the resources they need to do their jobs effectively and every tool needed to respond to the day's challenges. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints who have gone before us. May we run with perseverance the race set before us until we find our rest in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let's share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace be with you. Peace. 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 Peace, everybody. Peace, Chris. Peace. continue with the 
offering of our tithes and of our lives. Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. saying, Take and eat, all of you. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He poured it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, in heaven, 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. this holy meal, we have a promise from Christ that he will cling to us to forgive our sins and lead us into eternal life. As this is his table, all are welcome to come forward and to receive these gifts. Or, excuse me, you are welcome to come forward and receive these gifts. You may be seated. <laughs>
stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you now and into eternal life. Well, I want to say a thank you today for Arsenia Walker, who has donated and decorated and dedicated our flowers today for her birthday, which is on Tuesday. Happy birthday. And in memory of her mother and sister. And Helen, thank you for such a lovely flower display. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've got a lot of birthdays this month. In fact, we've got a birthday today. Today, Dana Russell's birthday today. All right. There is a cake. We, she doesn't want to be singled out, so what'd you say? Happy birthday, Dana. There we go. We won't wait. We won't make a deal, but there is a cake. There will be a cake, yes. And uh, Helen's got a birthday this week, too. Happy birthday, Helen and Jerry Brown. Some of you know Jerry. She's got her birthday coming up next week. Busy August birthdays. I love that. Uh, you know, we want to also... Uh, thank our cleaning crew. They were here on Friday and cleaned out our Sunday school storage unit upstairs and reorganizing the craft closet a little bit. And thank you to Stacy and Christine and Ivy and Dana and Helen and, did I, and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, what a great day. It's so great to see everybody buzzing around up there and, and getting things back in order. And the air conditioner was working, right? Thank yes. you. Praise the God. Yeah. That's right. Very good. We have three more weeks in this book of Ruth, so read along with us, get into the story with us, there's more to come. And uh, hearing God's promises told through that story, it's just an amazing book, I, I love it. Uh, stick with us. We do have Bible study today too, join us in Barnes Hall as we, uh, we've been going on this spread the word Bible study, Pastor Matt, where are we at there? It's been really good discussions, I know that. Acts 26. We're in Acts 26. All right, reading in the book of Acts a little bit. So join us for that online and in person. If you're online, you can jump in the Zoom room and be with us that way. Uh, we had a, a, an event this week through the whole church. The whole Evangelical Lutheran Church in America met in Columbus, Ohio. Roger, come on up. Come on up. Pastor Matt, they're going to give us just a, a couple of highlights from their week in Columbus. Magical Columbus, Ohio. Give us some highlights. Come a little closer here. All right, go ahead, Raj. Oh, we got a bag. All right. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Three of them. Sadly, the presiding bishop uh, used one of those COVID tests and came up positive uh, Thursday or Friday. So keep the bishop. Right. And she happened to sit next to me like three days oh, before, yeah. but I tested. I tested negative. Um, so I, I wrote down a few notes. Um, first of all, I want to say how proud I, am, proud I am to belong to this church. The ELCA is striving to be more diverse, and I think we are certainly a pretty diverse congregation. The theme for the church-wide assembly was embody the word. Luke 24, 45 states, then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. We embody the word, both Jesus and the scriptures, by speaking it and proclaiming it. Martin Luther did this by translating the Bible for everyone to read. We voted for new board members and a new vice president. We elected Imran Sadiqi. Uh, Imran was raised Muslim and became a Lutheran in 2011. The runner-up was Roberto Lara Aranda and Tracy Beasley finished third. Note that all three are people of color. We are making changes. And also for those who have been here a while, 
Sheena Foster was elected to churchwide council as well. Oh, awesome. Yes. Yeah, I haven't heard that. Oh, yes. Um, we voted on changes to the Constitution, some housekeeping text, and we also voted on what are called memorials. Memorials are issues we hope to change in the future. This year we voted on several memorials, including salary equity, greenhouse gas reduction, fortifying urban ministries, proclaiming our stance on Roe versus Wade, and separation agreements for pastors. Several of the memorials were a result of the internal conflict of the Sierra Pacific Synod, and on behalf of the ELCA, Bishop Even Eaton gave an emotional apology to the Sierra Pacific Synod, and it was accepted with gratitude. The ELCA is striving to become more diverse, and during the course of five church services, we heard Bible verses read in Spanish, Chinese, and I believe it was Ethiopian. Uh, we were honored to have indigenous members of the ELCA also read, preach, and sing. They are a growing part of the ELCA. I went to an after hours, so to speak, presentation of Middle East ELCA members. Yes, they are also growing, and a member named Sally Azar is completing her studies in Germany. She will return to the Middle East to be the first woman pastor in the Middle East. Think about that. <laughs> Um, the Grand Canyon Synod now also has a sister synod with Southeast Iowa Synod. Uh, if you imagine Iowa, just cut it north and south for half, and then the east part, north and south this way, and they're in the southeast part. Um, Includes Des Moines and the city by the river, too. Yes, <laughs> they're very proud. They have like a hundred and some odd congregations in their synod, and that's a lot for just a small one. But anyway. Um, the Grand Canyon Synod, and I'm done that. We also have a relation with the Northeast Iowa Synod, with our growing relationship with Mexico. And finally, we have a strong relationship with the Rocky Mountain Synod, and we had fellowship and dinner with them. And I sat, actually sat next to a person from New Mexico, and her name was Ruth. How about that? <laughs> um, the Churchwide Council will be voting. We, Bill, we, we, we will be working hard the next three years, and the results will be voted on on the 2025 Churchwide Assembly. Should I say it? Yeah. All right. Our synod will be the hosting synod for the next synod churchwide assembly, and it will be held in Phoenix <laughs> in 2025. Contact so, the synod office volunteers will be needed. It's a big undertaking. Many volunteers. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Roger. Yeah, I want to thank Roger for the previous report, and I do want to get you out of here. So I've got my report is uh, organized. I won't tell you about all the nights I spent with uh, friends, old and new, uh, people I just met um, over Facebook to talk theology, who I got to sit with and have a beer with in person. Uh, shout out to Bishop Rigel of West Virginia, uh, probably the coolest bishop in the LCA. Sorry, Dad. Uh, uh, I'll tell you why later. Um, <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to put these under three headings, the three R's, repentance, reform, and renewal. Uh, as Roger pointed out, there was a formal apology given to the congregation of Iglesia Luterana Maria uh, San Pellegrina, I think. Uh, is that, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, they did send people to uh, receive an apology from the ELCA. Uh, for the way that they were treated in the removal of their uh, pastor. Um, all that is online if you want to read more. Um, and we also have issued a declaration of form of apology uh, to native and indigenous peoples in the United States. And uh, a memorial was signed uh, having the churchwide assembly uh, join into the land, uh, acknowledge the land back movement. Um, and with recommendations for Synod to do land acknowledgments uh, whenever we gather uh, to share the stories of the peoples um, who originally were on the land that we live and gather in. Um, on the topic of reform, this was a hot topic. Um, if I wanted to be cynical, I would say that we kicked the can down the road. Uh, but uh, some strongly worded memorials were signed internally uh, for churchwide to look at. Specifically, the church council will be looking at these things. These include a, um, a uh, examination of the pay scale between uh, white male clergy and female clergy and clergy of color. This included as well memorials about the way that NDAs um, are kind of forced on pastors in order that they would not talk about their mistreatment uh, tied to their severance packages. Um, 
And uh, there were many other things that um, many people have pushed looking at um, our life together um, so that uh, we will pay more attention to the uh, realities of uh, racism um, in our midst and figure out how to be a church together in a better way to combat that. The third area is the area of renewal. Uh, I was absolutely overjoyed at our selection for the next vice president of the ELCA, which is the highest lay office in the church. Um, I had heard very good things about him from some friends who served in the Southeast. Uh, he was a very compelling speaker, but it also has a very compelling story about being raised a Christian and Easter Muslim, or a Christmas and Easter Muslim, uh, and uh, subsequently losing his faith and being invited by his now wife to church um, and discovering and embracing the Lutheran faith. And he is very committed to the uh, reforms that the assembly indicated um, that we want to make in the future. I'm, I'm very thankful uh, not only for all of the people in the assembly that I got to meet and spend time with, um, in, including you, Roger. <laughs> um, uh, I thought our synod crew was a lot of fun uh, to be with all week. Um, but uh, I was um, just incredibly encouraged by Bishop Hutterer and her own um, desire to um, link our synod up with other synods that we might start doing mission and ministry together. It was very much a working trip for her and uh, I just want to uh, thank her publicly for um, just kind of leading us as a group uh, to look at ways that we might do ministry, um, including I did slip uh, the Bishop of uh, Southeast Iowa, Marissa's contact information, <laughs> to finally uh, get some Iowa people to, to, to journey across the river and come to Leadership Lab. So a lot of networking. It was wonderful to be in Columbus. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I did some evangelism at the char bar at like 2 in the morning uh, one time. So uh, it, was, uh, it was a really uh, great time, but I am so happy to be back and to be back with all of you uh, just to continue to uh, do this work of being church together. And we didn't talk about it too much at the assembly, uh, but sharing the name of Jesus Christ, forgiving sins, and sharing the, just, the joy that we have in community together. I didn't hear that too much over the week, but there is joy, and it's certainly here. So thank you. A busy week. Thank you both for serving that day.
Um, so if you signed up already, I've got it for order. Uh, but if you need to still need to get on that list, go ahead and sign up, and we'll be adding to our list, okay? And they are uh, 10 bucks a piece to help cover the cost. And uh, join us for a very special and fun day. Oh, yes, we all finish up with a big barbecue at the end of the day. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and hopefully it won't be uh, scorching hot or 100% humidity. It's all coming. So exciting times. Ms. Ivy?